Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brockton's War Memorial Building, dedicated to the citizens, men and women of Brockton who have given their lives in time of war. I would like to begin this ceremony with the presentation of colors. Please post the colors.
Please remain standing for our national anthem. Please remain standing via so Cecile Gomes will lead us in the, Nash, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. This time, I would like to introduce the Fire Department Chaplain William McCoy for an invocation. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord God of hosts, good shepherd, we gather here to give thanks for the men and women of our armed forces. We gather again to honor them, not just to remember. Their service has honored and continue to honor you. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the sacrifices they've made, for the sacrifices they're making now. Sacrifices in our behalf and in behalf of freedom-loving people everywhere. We remember them, we honor them by upholding the same values they've upheld, values that sustain the many liberties we continue to enjoy this day. We pray, Lord, for those who bear the wounds of war, physical, emotional, and spiritual wounds, for their courage and strength, we pray, and the healing power of your merciful love. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us all, that we may be free of hatred and hostility. Help us to be free, not for doing whatever we please, but for doing what we must in the interest of the greater good. Guide those, O oh Lord, who devote themselves to the work of a governance for justice and peace. Subdue those who strive for more of violence and mayhem and war. Grant, we pray, to each of us the wisdom and will to be fair, to be kind, to be humble, as servants ourselves to all that is lasting and good and true. For your name's sake, and in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend McCoy. As you know, for those who've been attending these ceremonies over the years, we try to uh, honor the memory of fallen veterans who have dedicated themselves to the service of other veterans in the, in the city of Brockton. Uh, due to the situation over the last year, we were unable to recognize uh, two members at the time of their passing. Um, today we have with us as an honored guest, Elizabeth Texera, the granddaughter of John Montagano, whose second home was this building. Uh, 
he and his brother dedicated uh, their lives to serving other veterans following their own service during World War II. So today we're honoring John Montagano, and I introduce Elizabeth Texera to the podium for that purpose. Thank you. Good morning. It is my honor to speak before you today on behalf of my grandfather, John Montagano. On Memorial Day weekend of my sixth grade year, a whole seven years ago today, I stood before a similar crowd of Americans to read a speech I had written honoring my role model, my friend, and my grandfather, who was a World War II Navy veteran. I had won an essay contest out of the students in my grade, and although I might have had a quieter voice and a lesser understanding back then, my pride for my grandfather was just as great because he had instilled patriotism in me from the moment I could begin to grasp the depth and meaning of such a concept. John Montagano was an active member of the United States Navy Seabees from 1943 to 1946. He experienced World War II when he was just a young man, but his passion for patriotism and appreciation for the American sacrifice were sentiments that he would carry with him for the remainder of his life. He continued to pursue work to aid veterans and always carried a natural ability to pass along his fervent Americanism. My grandfather spent much of his life working and living in Brockton where he raised his children, my mom and her brother and sister, and I grew up hearing about the infamous city through stories and anecdotes that fully conveyed what Brockton meant to each of them. I heard about their little house on Tremont Street and Campello and the shops in the neighborhood. My grandfather spent much of his working career in Brockton, where he owned a barber shop for over 30 years, beginning in 1950. He was a past commander of the American Legion Post 35 in Brockton and remained active as the adjutant until the day he died. He was also very active in veterans affairs in many other capacities, including commander of the VFW Post 697 in Whitman until 2001. He was the district representative in Brockton for Congressman Joe Moakley from 1992 to 2001, where his main focus was assisting veterans. For as long as he was able, my grandfather marched in Brockton Memorial Day Parade and decorated graves of veterans. He was the veterans agent in Raynham for many years until he retired at the young age of 91. For as long as I can remember, my grandfather had advocated, advocated for patriotism and broadcasted his love for the United States and the veteran community, even at home during our visits, at family events, and in every other area of his personal life. He would always hand out tiny American flags and patriotic pins to the family. He was unapologetically vocal about his political opinions and his American character. He always wore an emblem of the United States somewhere on his person, usually in the form of pins on his shirt pocket. He spoke so highly of his work with veterans, remaining passionate in the work until the moment he retired. He was a mentor to so many younger ver veterans who he helped in society, but even more importantly, he became their friend. Thus, my grandfather's identity as American and a veteran undeniably translated into parts of his in innate personal identity. Simply put, he was a veteran and an American in everything he did. Even further, my grandfather embodied a great number of unique characteristics that made him perfectly suited for promoting and embodying patriotism. He was wise and hardworking and brave. He always acted on what he believed in, even if he knew he'd be met with disagreement. He was lighthearted and empathetic and thoughtful. You always knew that any gift from my grandfather would be one that you would cherish. He was also a passionate speaker. Whatever words he said held personal and deliberate meaning. Even when my grandfather's last years came upon us and he grew more quiet and observant, you could feel his peace and wisdom just by holding his hand. These qualities were what truly made my grandfather an amazing man and a special member of the veteran community. He was not only a true American himself, but he had personal values and qualities that encouraged the manifestation of American morals in everyone. His kind demeanor and approachability were such important contributions to his work with veterans and in everything he did. My grandfather was the kind of man people felt honored just to know. He always held his head high and he held the utmost pride in being an American. He lived a life that was full of meaning of, and work and giving and contributions. He lived the life of a model American. When my grandfather, John Montagano, passed away this year, the world lost a World War II Navy veteran, a veteran's advocate, a grandfather, a friend, and a whole lifetime's worth of wisdom, passion, and patriotism. But the great thing about John Montagano was that he left behind so much more than just a family. He also left behind a legacy of courage, kindness, and patriotism. He left behind a group of Americans that he shaped and encouraged himself, and his passion for the United States will be carried on. I can attest to that myself. Thank you to John Montagano for a lifetime dedicated to the United States. We are so grateful. Thank you.
Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, the second man we're honoring is, was no stranger to anyone in Brockton. Um, and I've invited today uh, his, uh, one of his many friends, Mr. Robert Martin, who served for many years in the mayor's uh, office as a director of human services. Mr. Martin. First of all, bear with me, I have a terrible voice today with the pollen count, so I apologize. That was a tough act to follow. Can we have another round of applause for this young lady? <laughs> Thank you, Dave, Mr. Mayor, elected officials, city employees, friends, uh, former colleagues, uh, Brocktonians, and of course, my fellow veterans. When VSO Dave Farrell asked me to say a few words about George today, I hesitated, but then I said, sure. But wait a minute, how do you really just say a few words about this most unique man and patriot? Um, I, I have to go to my other notes. Uh, while I'm certain that there are many others, including my former boss or bosses, uh, Chief of Staff uh, Mary Waldron, Registrar of Deeds John Buckley, uh, City Councilors, who are equally, if not more eloquent than I, to give these remarks, on their insights on George. Anyways, here it goes. For some reason, I was reminded of that opening song from the play movie Rent, and I'll paraphrase, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in a life? In George Cataldo's case, that was times 92. Uh, as part of the America, America's generous, greatest generation, you measure it love, duty, honor, country, and in George's case, certainly compassion and community. He also had so many other attributes thrown in for good measure. He was so many things to so many people. He was a World War decorated Navy veteran, national commander of the Italian American War Vets, family man certainly, Sears Roebuck employee, city councilor, mayor assistant, city hall ex volunteer extraordinaire, Entertainer, commonly known as the Silver Fox to many senior citizens. Cable TV host, Southeastern Mass Vogue Tech Advisory Committee member, and we could go on and on and on. George and I knew each other for literally decades, and even though he suffered with family tragedy and loss, he never lost his sense of humor or whimsy. George saw firsthand the challenges we faced in, in government, from the bureaucratic and regulatory side, but also from the human side in response to both individuals and families in crisis. Even with the limited means, my favorite yet ironic expression that George used was, that's not right, and it certainly wasn't. That tall, slender man with a twinkle in his eye in those colorful suits had such a way about him that few people had. He, that few people had. he was a character, sure, but in, so many, but in so many ways, have, so many have described him with the sincerity and commitment always came through, with his ever-present ease and grace. So let us celebrate and acknowledge him today, Memorial Day, George Cataldo, a real champion in his own right and truly a man for all seasons. May his colorful life be remembered as a blessing for here today, all of us here today and for future generations. Keep shining, George. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Martin. Bob uh, is a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he served as a lieutenant, United States Army, shortly after graduation from Brockton High School. Another excellent example of what Brockton produces in its high school. <laughs> this time, I would like to introduce the mayor of the city of Brockton, the Honorable Robert Sullivan. Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to, again, thank Elizabeth 
and I want to thank Bob for their kind words. Uh, I knew both uh, Mr. Cataldo and Mr. Montagno, true American heroes, great, great civic pride in the city of Champions. So again, our thoughts and prayers to their families. I also want to just take a moment to, uh, to thank David Farrell and, and CeCe Gomes for uh, coordinating. It takes a lot of time and effort to coordinate this, and I want to thank all the brave men and women that serve here in the city of Brockton. Many of them are veterans in their own right. Uh, police and fire and the honor guard, the pipes and drums, BEMA, uh, everybody that's here today. Uh, we're here today uh, to pay respect to those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. That's why we're here today. We're able to assemble because the brave men and women that have died for our nation, for our freedom. So I'd like to first of all uh, thank uh, the elected officials that are here today, Senator Mike Brady, State Rep Michelle Dubois, uh, Council President Wynne Farwell, former Mayor and Council at Large Moses Rodriguez, Council Shirley Azak, the Dean of the Council, Council Yanieri, uh, Council at Large Rita Mendez. I want to thank uh, Jeff Thompson, Councilor, Jack Lally, Councilor. I want to thank State Rep uh, Jerry Cassidy. I know uh, Rep and House Leader Claire Cronin has a conflict. She's in Easton. A lot of things are at 10 o'clock, so uh, again, we want to thank her for what she does for the district. Tim Sullivan, school committee man, and uh, John Buckley, who's our Register of Deeds. And I see our dear friend in the back, former Councilor and Police Chief Paul Stadinsky. Uh, thank you for being here as well. Um, before I read the proclamation from the Governor and Council Nicastro, I'm so sorry, Susan. Uh, I said Tim Sullivan, Jack. I think I got him. Sullivan's, we don't forget each other, Tim. I want to, uh, I want to just, uh, before I read the proclamation from the Governor, I just want to take a moment. Um, you know, Brockton is, is the city of champions, and everybody uh, that is here today in their own right, uh, Mr. Cataldo, Mr. Montagno, and each and every one of you, fit that mold of a champion. Um, we spent time this morning, and I want to thank the commander and all the, the, the men and women that uh, honored this morning. We started at 7.30 at Melrose um, to honor the foreign uh, war vets that we've lost uh, and World War I vets. And then we went to Legion Parkway, and then we went down the street to the Korean and Vietnam. Today is a day to remember, but we should always remember each and every day. That's what it means to be an American. We never forget those. No matter what conflict, no matter how he or she passed, they did it for us, and that's why we're here today. So I want to wish uh, the families of those that have fallen uh, Godspeed. I want to thank, again, the Cataldo family and Montagna family for giving us both George and John. And with that being said, I'd like to read the proclamation from Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, People in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. Whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now therefore I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, dear, do, do hereby proclaim May 31st, 2021, to be Memorial Day, and to urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in observance. Given as the Executive Chamber in Boston, this is the first day of May in the year 2021, and of Independence of the United States of America, the 244th, by His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the city of Brock and the Commonwealth of the nation. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just underlining uh, what the Mayor touched on, um, you can't have these uh, ceremonies honoring our past, our military past, our uh, historical past without the coherent cooperation of those elected officials who serve us. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts 
is the best state in the country in terms of providing for its veterans. That's a kind of a hidden element of uh, uh, what goes on in Massachusetts. You, you don't know it because you, was, you take it for granted when you, you're a veteran here. But uh, as I come in contact and hear from VSOs in other parts of the country, no other state in, the, uh, in our nation devotes as much resource to supporting veterans. So thank you, Mayor, and uh, our elected officials as well. So at this time, uh, we will have a silent tribute, which is represented by the laying of this wreath next to the flag for all the fallen comrades in the last year. And I uh, asked the VFW to um, play taps at this time. Details. This time, at this time, the Brockton firefighters, pipe and drum, will play Amazing Grace.
this time, I would ask that colors be retired. Details. Right. Peace. Forward. March. Thank you all for joining us today. It concludes our ceremony for Memorial Day. I welcome you all back in a few months about Veterans Day, where hopefully we'll have a parade for the first time in two years. Uh, thank you.